Hello everyone, welcome to our final Cowboy Bebop episode here on Who's That Anime, where we talk about anime, sort of, while talking about other things in life. We, we've been better, we've been better about it. Getting better, getting better. Yep. I'm, I'm I like myself. that, for those of you who will eventually watch the video component of this, that, that was... A pretty nice zoom in of your face. If you just going getting better, getting better, getting better, and as it zooms in on your face, that was uh, priceless. I enjoyed that. I couldn't tell you better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, final final two episodes, episodes twenty five and twenty six. I realize I don't think we've mentioned the names of the episodes. Uh, or did we? It's been because we've recorded the mo- oh my brain, because we recorded in a funny way, mm-hmm. uh, and I t- to be honest, I didn't even look up the the Japanese name for Cowboy Bebop the movie, but there is one. Oh, I should have should have said. All right, it's a music reference. A new- music reference. What is it? Cowboy Bebop yes. name. Cowboy Bebop knocking on heaven's door knock, is the name of the knock on heaven's door. <laughs> I was close enough to the song that I'd probably know what you meant. <laughs> Thanks. I'd take that as a compliment. I mean, usually, <laughs> usually my song, song titles were... My, of, you and I have known each other for a number of years, Colin, and of all the many things I will praise you for, to be, to, to be blunt, singing is probably not <laughs> the one. Oh, well. You know what I found out? Yeah. I found that Vic Reeves was a singer before he was a comedian. Yeah, I think I knew that, and I, but in a way that my brain heard it and went, "Oh, that's a thing," and then just tucked that away. Yeah, <laughs> never to think about it again. Uh, uh, thanks to uh, Jules Holland in Annie, which is a a TV show aired on BBC Two for the past thirty Ogmanay. thirty years, twenty years. It's a long time. I I love the Hoot Nanny, by comparison to all the other Hogmanay stuff. Yeah, uh, New Year's Eve stuff for those that not. Oh yeah, uh, Scottish for anyone else. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Uh, by the way, Jill Holland. A quick, a quick. I should also say. Oh no, go on. Jill Holland isn't actually Scottish either, as far as I'm aware. Uh no, I don't think so. I think he's English. Yeah, isn't he? I, I, they also record it in like September. <laughs> oh, well, that explains why it was uh, awful lax in the rules of uh, self isolating. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone was probably put into tents for 10 days prior to being in that room together. And... Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, it's pretty good going. I remember that, that one episode where some ra- some singer came on. And he was like wasted to God knows what end or high on some random shit and his fucking act was like what the fuck is this guy on? That was like four or five years ago that one or something. Wasn't the the brother from Bonnie M, no? I don't know, maybe. Cause he's fucked. <laughs> <laughs> he's I think he's proper. Like, there's some really great videos of him just like losing his shit on stage, not like angrily, but just like woo and and yeah, it's uh, it's pretty good stuff. Yeah, it might be. It sounds similar to him. Uh, I just I don't know. I it popped up in my feed that in the years there, before it was like something that I said four years ago or something on the Facebook. So. Before we get into this, very quickly, I wanted to say, and I know I've been talking about this, my EverDrive arrived. Oh, wow. Look at that. It looks like a, an EverDrive. Oh, you got to yep. get an SD, SD, uh, SD with it. Uh, I didn't get one with it, but I bought one for like uh, £6 off of Amazon and just chucked it in it because it only takes up to 64 gig. So. Oh, all right. Doesn't go higher. Which is about... Well, it's about ten times the amount of space required to hold the entire Game Boy Advance library. So, <laughs> oh well, you know, it doesn't it doesn't matter anymore. 
Unless you want to play two nah. minute. No, I I did see that, and that that would be cool. Um, although the reason I got it was so that when my uh, pocket uh thingy analog pocket arrives later this year, <laughs> in time for Christmas this year, um, then I'll be able to use it in that, which would be nice. Yeah, and you'll be able to. Will you be able to have it? So it will play Game Boy games as well and stuff. Uh, I th- I believe you can put uh, files in it that allow it to do that to play Game Boy Color and Game Boy. So I could just put the whole complement on that one cartridge and be done with it. Cool, cool. That'd be cool. Which we're not. It'd be, it'd be all right. Not promoting any illegal activities here. <clears throat> I uh, I am firmly behind the concept of sharing games digitally particularly when there is no other way to play them in a modern device like duck hunt like duck hunt like i don't know like if i think about um it's i can't remember if super mario world land three and two and one for that matter are out on any any virtual console or super mario world out on the uh, Switch, like SNES library. Oh, and the the SNES versions, but these are the Game Boy ones. Like, yeah, but sort of that's it started at Super Mario World two on the Game Boy. Isn't it? Uh, Super Mario Land two on the Game Boy. Ah, uh, okay, okay. And Super Mario Land, yeah, I I don't I th- uh no, it is available. That's interesting, but you have to just buy it three fifty nine. On what now? On the Switch eShop. Oh, did they move that? Switch eShop? Sorry, no. 3DS eShop. I was going to say, I thought it was one of the older eShops. Yeah, I would have... uh, Are not there? I I would have bought that. No, it's there. The Wii Wii, Wii shop is not there. Yeah. The Wii U one and the 3DS are still there. For how much longer? I mean, not that much long, judging by how long the Wii one lasted. So, yeah. and that was the successful one. <laughs> yeah, I'm surprised they've not nuked the Wii U one from orbit. That was just confusing <laughs> name, man. When they announced the Wii U, it was like, and it's this thing, and it just looked like a controller with a, a TV on it, and it's like, oh, that'd be cool add on for the Wii. No, no, this this is a new console. No. So, it what? didn't help that it was also white as well, like the, the Wii. The Wii, and you're like, yeah, should have released the black one only to start with. Or, that might have helped. Yeah, or like call it something different. <laughs> yeah. 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 Anyway, let's get on with this. Project so, Dolphin. episode 25 The Real Folk Blues, part one, or. Ugh, Zara iru foku burusu zempen. Burusu. Borusu. Borusu. Borusa. Boris. It has three U. They're all U's, and one of them has a line above it, and I don't know what the line does. All right, I didn't know that was even a thing. And there. There me. Get on with it. Get on with it. Get on with it. Talk about anime, for God's sake. Yeah, that's what this is all about. Surely. No. Yeah, it's what life's about. I am wearing my... Uh, and Not that everyone can see it, because this is a, an audio medium as well, but... Straight out of... My uh, straight out of Neon Genesis Evangelion jumper, so... I guess he, he was born from, like, the rebirth by Ray. You ever actually watch it? Yeah, 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 like a long time ago. <laughs> it's on a, <laughs> a long time ago. It's on Netflix now. I got ten minutes into it and went, I am not in the headspace for this. <laughs> <laughs> You're never in the headspace for Neo Geo. Uh, uh, well, th- that was the thing was when I was much younger, when I watched it, it was like, this is mental. What's happening? <laughs> why, wh- why is any of this a thing? And then at the end of it, it's like, cool. What? <laughs> What is this? <laughs> Why did any of this happen? And 
it's still the same. I still don't understand it yep. fully. But then I think that's maybe the old explosions series. are cool as shit though. Yeah, and the and the big robots going. Hey. They did explosions better than just about anyone. Like and like that's including the Akira stuff, which did explosions pretty well. Uh, and that was a big budget movie, by comparison. Better explosions, better than anyone. Better than Michael Bay. I I would say yes, but that's because it had sparing use of explosions <laughs> but when they happened they were cool as fuck <laughs> whereas michael bay everything explodes all the time <laughs> you, know what, you know what would make this uh this even better if this <coughs> if this tree just exploded right now <laughs> so i was watching a, a video about a stuntman working with michael bay and he was talking about the fact that they were doing this thing where in the transformers movie a bus was to get picked up and the stunt people, some of them were strapped in and to be hanging from the bus. Uh, and others were supposed to uh, fall out through the window. All right, okay. And and to the ground. Uh, and they, they got there to film it. They did it on pads. They went through sort of the gaps in the window. And it was like, okay, we'll be back to do this again tomorrow. <laughs> no pads. And, and a polarized pane of glass that was not properly breakaway. <laughs> like they had guys falling through glass not being able to see where they were falling to oh god and like apparently uh, the five guys who were supposed to drop out it's like three of them ended up going to the hospital and the guy who was talking was like um there are not many of us left <laughs> we, we can't keep doing these reshoots <laughs> oh fuck's sake uh, yeah, so he did go on to say he's like to be fair to Michael Bay, he's not like hiding in a room. He's like super up in it and always like right in the action. But also, I feel like if I was signing onto a project, I maybe wouldn't want to die. So, <laughs> yeah, Michael Bay explosions. Michael Bay deaths. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so real folks blue, uh, real folk blues part one. Mm -hmm. Um. Uh, how does this even start? This, 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 there's like a... Things kick off with a bang, if I remember rightly. Do they? Because of course they... Well, they, is it, do they not... Are they not, like, drinking? And wallowing in, in their own sorrow at the fact that... Uh, Faye and... And, and uh, Ed and Ayn have all left. Yeah. The Bebop. To a degree... They're in a bar drinking the sorrows away, that's for sure. And, um, on Mars. But yep. is it not? <clears throat> start off with uh, Vicious being summoned to the council. Oh shit, you're right. Yeah, there's like the... He arrives and is like presumably there to fuck shit up uh, and didn't expect it to to be that difficult. <laughs> yeah, he arrives and, then... and I think he was getting summoned because he was being intolerant. The council has, has not been like liking his uh, attitude for the past. Like, is it the the red the red dragons? Yeah, yeah. And uh, and he was like, ah, oh, well, I don't need to listen to you much longer. And then like, we're going to like, uh, do a coup. And the guys were like, nah. Sort of through your plans and uh, fuck you, vicious. You're getting taken away. Yeah, he does a good old fashioned "get your hands off of me" type thing, and then they're like, "Nah, just put the cuffs on him." Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like it seemed for a minute he was gonna get away with it, and they're like, "Nah, just like don't listen to him. Put the cuffs on him and take him the fuck away." Yeah, it was that, and also he says, "Oh, you should just let me to die." It's like, nah. That's not that's not how we do it. Thing things here, you know that vicious. You got rot yeah. in a room. It's not punishment enough. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I forgot about that because they're all like it's sort of a little bit of a Star Wars Episode Three, The Rock. I have the high ground type thing <laughs> of these uh dudes high up going like, Meh, fuck you, vicious. Yeah, all these old dudes. 
Yeah, which of course he does complain about that they're old. Yeah. Oh, they're they're old but... and stuck in their old ways, and things need to progress. Yeah, I mean he's he's not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> he's not. Um, and then fucking. And then I think it cuts to the bar. Yeah, and then they're because his cues discussing. Yeah, his cues has started awake in this indicative of like we got him like end all ties to that group. That's yes, you're right. They start to like cut ties to anyone who had any involvement with that group and that within the syndicate. Yeah, <laughs> which means Spike, <laughs> even though he's not part of it anymore. <laughs> Because well, uh, in like true Pacino fashion, just when I think I'm out, they keep pulling me back in. Um, mm. And also, Julia, it would seem, is on the cards. Yeah. Who has mysteriously, we know, has been alive throughout all of this and has barely been in it. And I complained about this the last time, maybe in the movie, actually. Yeah, we com- complained about it in the movie episode of the fact that they tried to have this overarching story where very little of the overarching story was ever involved in any of the episodes. Yeah, yeah, we did mention that in there. V- Vicious, Vicious has been in three episodes. Mm-hmm. His collective screen time is less than four minutes. Where did you get that information from? Did he go back and watch them? My brain! Like, I'm thinking about the times he's on the screen. He's on the screen in that the first two-part episode... Yeah, like, but very little. Yep. The most he's on screen is the scene where he kills the the old syndicate dude in the throat, and he's very briefly on the screen there. He's on the screen during the fight scene with Spike in the church, yep. and then he's on the, he's in it very briefly again when he's on the rooftop and shoots Spike. Oh, what? No, wait, 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 wait. He he was in throughout those that two part there. Well, in the sense that he was was he? Yeah, yeah, because he. He was behind Lynn, who took the bullet for her. So, for him. Yeah, but so much so that I forgot. And uh, <laughs> he was uh, summoned to the council at that point. The council members appeared in that episode and told him, you go and fucking get yourself sorted out, mate. Go, go and do this for us. I... Right, I'm looking this up. I'm going to say six minutes. Uh, uh, it does not you gonna... suggest. No, I'm going to have to actually do the calculation. I'm going to do it. So <clears throat> it's definitely like it's going to be less than 10 minutes. Yeah. Out of 26 episodes <laughs> and a movie. <laughs> The main the main antagonist is in it for less than ten minutes. I think he was in a flashback. Oh well. Even at that, I'm fairly confident. It's less than ten minutes. It, it's less than ten minutes, and he may be spoken about, but I'm also not confident of that. He mentioned when he's in episodes. So I don't think he's ever really mentioned again. I don't know. It's oh, just like it would be like uh, in... watching the X Files, and then them kind of like talking about aliens in the first episode of the season, and then at the end of the season, it's like oh, shit. Remember there were aliens. It's like that's right, there were aliens. We should get back to that. And they kind of did it that way, but they tried to intersperse it a little bit more. Yeah, yeah. It really wasn't much about aliens, X Files. It was more about these weird shit that was happening. Yeah, monster of the week, which made it great. Monster of the week. <laughs> Yeah. So um Yeah, so the uh Spike and uh Jet are drinking the bar saying discussing how they've it's got quiet now 'cause they all, all they always wanted them to leave but realised that they were a big in- integral part to the to the family as it were. I think more so Jet is missing them than Spike. Yeah. Well they're both missing them. Oh yeah. Yeah, Spike is uh, not indifferent, not upset, maybe more annoyed, 
but Jet is actually upset that they're gone. Yeah. But then, gosh, you can kind of see that. That was kind of one of his character building points in the movie of how he was worried about them all whenever they would think come yeah. back. Because he was a, a father figure. Look, if you, if you look back on like all the previous episodes, the what like the ones where, uh, you know, they've gone to find Spike, and it's like, nope, not gonna get involved. Just gonna sit here and work on my bonsai tree. Yeah. And then it's just like silence for five to ten seconds. He's like, <sighs> <sighs> and then just gets up and goes to <laughs> goes to fix it. Yeah. It's like, yep, yep, that was gonna happen. <laughs> Very much. Pretty much. Uh, He's Jet is Jet is easily my favorite character. Yeah, like he's he is a perfectly animeish written character who is like flawed in so many ways and kind of a broken person and definitely not perfect. Mm -hmm. But like underneath every part of that is just at their core the most human of any of them. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. I mean, because it's like I feel like Faye's arc is sort of uh, quite fairy taleish, really. Ed's is just a bit confusing. <laughs> it has an arc. Uh, I, yeah, he appeared. He's a cat, uh, and then he then he went away. <laughs> hijacked the hijacked and the evil. Uh, forced him to take him with him, uh, her, and then 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 she found his da her dad. Yeah, so who then instantly uh -huh. abandoned her. Yeah, he's he was fucked. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he's a, you guys just messed up. But then you've got Spike, who is basically like, despite like being an enjoyable character, is defined entirely by a relationship that you've never seen him in, and that's it. Yeah, he's like, there's no, there's no growth to Spike. There is just the eventuality of getting to the point where he's going to find a resolution to a problem he's had since the first episode. Whereas with with Jet, it's not problems, it's nothing like that, other than the fact he is vehemently against having women or children or animals on board the Bebop. Oh, that's, that's Spike. But actually... Well, oh, that, that's Spike, sorry, yeah. yeah. Jet doesn't care. <laughs> uh, no, Jet doesn't not care. Jet is just you know jet but the the point being is that with jet the character is you get glimpses of the past and you understand why he is the way he is mm -hmm. like it's that's that's the way that works but i and I, you get bits of that with Faye as well like you understand why she is um just basically so cut off and hard on people and tries not to you know have relationships mm. like that that becomes clear but with jet with spike it's just well he's sleepy and he's really good at his job um, and yeah because all three characters are in some form of depression <clears throat> oh like I, I have no doubt like <laughs> they're all suffering from something um but I just the the thing with Spike is is like he is a really enjoyable character and I love the way he's written, the way he talks, and the things that frustrate him are funny. Um but I just don't feel like there's any character arc really. I have been building in it. Well, I mean he I think <coughs> towards the last couple of episodes he certainly softened up a bit. But like you said, this episode is kind of just pulls him right back into what his obsession is. Um, yeah. So what we'll say about this, they're in the bar having a drink, and then Jet makes the remark, well, now I see why you don't like will women, children, and animals. That's it, yeah. Uh, and then I think a couple well, there's a shot goes through the door and shoots the bartender. Person? Oh man, I think the door gets kicked in and the bartender gets fucking wasted. Like, just riddled with bullets. Yeah. You're like, that seems harsh. He was just getting drinks. Yeah. He didn't need any of that. Yeah, he didn't need any of that. And then uh, Jet takes one in the leg 
and jump over the bar and shoot at the guys that came into the bar. And then Lynn's brother, Rin, appears. Uh, Shin. Shin. Lynn's brother. Yeah, sorry, Shin. It's not quite as bad as Rin. Not not confusing at all, though. Like, because, you know, like, I, I don't brothers. imagine that, you know, anybody kind of... Yeah, because they look alike as well. It's like, did, sorry, was that? Did you shout me? No, no, it's your brother. I was looking for your brother. Oh, okay. Yeah, like that probably happened every ten minutes. Yeah, well, you know, it's not like we know about that. That's not part of any of the show. Um, yeah, it was like uh, Spike goes Lynn as he appears around the corner, and it's like, no, no, I'm I'm Shin. Oh yeah, Shin, you're you're Lynn's brother, and has to state this statement that. Because yep. literally, yeah. it's the same. I thought you were in this, in this syndicate too. <laughs> Is that, I need to I need to dump this exposition as quickly as these guys are unloading their clips across the bar here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <clears throat> we need to we need to get the audience on board with what's just happened because this is a bit of a Deus Ex Machina. We need this situation to resolve itself really quickly. And uh, yeah, really quickly. Um, I think we also miss a scene where Julia is about and. She, oh, she gets, sorry, she gets a phone call hmm. saying they're disavowing everyone yeah. that's been involved in this group. They're going to come for you. You need to sort of get out. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Get get away. Is that is that Shin on the phone there as well? Might have Probably been. is, right? Might, might have been. I don't, I don't remember if it says explicitly or not, but no. it would make sense since he's trying to sort of Tempt them all. Help. Yeah. And then, uh, so, Spike goes, oh, you're, you're just kind of like his brother, uh, your brother stuck in the middle of it type thing. And uh, anyway, so yep. he helps Spike to escape um, the bar. And they go to the doctor that was in the second episode where Ayn appears. The one that yes. uh, was Hakeem beats up. After doing plastic surgery, yes, uh, that's right. And Spike's looking out for the syndicate, and Jet's going, "All right, Doctor, you haven't seen us here." And the Doc goes, "What? What are you on about? I'm just feeding these three kittens that can't get out my fucking uh, office quick enough." <laughs> that was quite amusing. It did make me. I don't know if you've watched uh, John Wick three. Might have watched it. I can't really remember it. Okay. So, like, okay, mild spoilers for the John Wick trilogy. But at the end of the second movie, he's made excommunicado from the as Guild of Assassins or whatever it is. Yeah. <clears throat> and uh, he has like an hour clock before his fourteen million dollar bounty becomes active. Yeah. And uh, he ends up getting in a fight with a guy who severs his artery on his like shoulder. Yeah. And he goes to a doctor who's like, you know that after this, like, I don't have long to do anything here. He's like, yeah, I know. And it gets to the point where the, he has to try and stitch him up before the time on the clock runs out. Otherwise, they'll know. And for some reason, it made me think of that. Yeah, oh, that makes sense. I mean, it's just your average uh, back alley uh, doctor doing operations under the... Oh, yeah. Um, I might have watched it. Is that the one that ends... In like that kind of like weird glass house, so penthouses somewhere. Yes, because the second one ends in, or the the first one, second one, one of them ends in a house of mirrors, and this one ends in a house of glass. First one I had in a house of mirrors, because I think the f he also kill he kills a dude with a book in this one. Yeah, because he's in like a a pawn shop, and they're all chasing him down. No, he's in, he's in a library. Oh, he's in a library, yeah. And he puts... The, he put, he's a really tall guy, like seven foot five. <laughs> and he, like, puts a book against his neck and smashes him down on the table and breaks his neck on the book. It's pretty amazing. Yeah. It's not violent at all, this movie. The John Wick movie. It's not violent at all. Well, no, he does get massively knife-happy with the guy as well and just starts fucking unloading knives into him while he's on the ground. That movie's really good. That, that, that's, <laughs> that's when he's in the antique shop. Because they all. Uh, I don't know if it's like, the antique shop. I think that is. 
it's not i don't know if it's an antique shop or a safe house for like weapons because there's like guns and shit in there as well is there not eventually yeah i think it's like we're kind of like weapons it's, shop it's the, to buy weapons. the big corridor with the glass cabinets with all the knives yeah here here's a a, a, a crazy fact for you uh-huh. there's no glass in those cabinets no gl- wait so all the things that were smashing was essentially computer generated it's all cgi the fuck? all right holy shit right yeah like there's not even a like unless i knew that i watched that looking the whole time going it's like i'm sure i'll be able to see like where it's obviously cgi it's like no no <laughs> that that looks right <laughs> yeah wow it's super cool that's weird fuck um <laughs> so where are we yeah so they're, they're, let's get to the doctors when the doctor's like yep oh yeah no don't worry don't need to worry about me i i know this uh i know the the mo in this soul malarkey you're at the syndicate's yeah. after you we were i'm not working with anyone i'll stay stum. don't need to tell anyone about shit um then i think it switches over to uh shin go and see go and see the council and the council asked him, oh, did you kill Spike? And I think he, he lied at that point. He says, no, he got away and killed everyone. Yeah. No, wait, does he does he not report to... Vicious. Vicious. He might want to... So has Vicious escaped at this point? Has Vicious murdered everyone? Yeah, because he's, he's done the coup and has murdered everyone, I think. Yeah, he, yeah, 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 yeah. Everyone's now, yeah. He did the, he did the, he did the kill. He did the killing. Oh, um, no. It cuts to Faye. Faye's in an airport. I was gonna say there is a scene with Faye and uh, Ju- and Julia. Yeah, so Faye's in the airport. Um, just kind of looking at her ship. And so happens on Mars, and there's yes. this old old lady going. Oh. Where's my son? I can't find my son. Yes! I forgot about this bit. And then he's like, oh, I'm here. Yeah, I'm here. And the son is... And it's that guy. It's the the host of the Bullseye Show or whatever it's called. Yeah. Um, Big Shot Show. Big Shot, yeah. The host of the Big Shot Show. And she's like, oh. It clicked for me because I... I was looking at him the whole time, and I'm like, you seem really familiar. And then she's like, oh, have you found a job yet? <laughs> and he's like, no, not yet, but I will. So he's like, what about your co-host? And I was like, co-host? wonder what kind of job he did. And it's like, holy shit, it's the guy. <laughs> yeah, it's the guy. And I'm sure he says something along the lines, oh, yeah, don't worry about her type thing. Since yeah. you know, the last thing you saw her is screaming like, get me my agent. <laughs> <laughs> she's probably living large on her law for her lawsuit win or whatever so yeah oh i don't think we mentioned it in the movie but it did appear in the movie and he did try to like promote the show by having like a call-in thing and win prizes which uh, that's right everyone uh d- it just fell flat on everyone like even the yeah even the host was like oh and then he was like all right Oh, on to the big show. Um, fucking this guy, he he needs to get caught. Got <laughs> super super amount of money. I forgot about that. I forgot about that. Yeah. Anyway, um, so Pete's out there. Uh, Julia swings by in a big red car, uh, convertible red car, uh, with people chasing her. And Faye, for some reason, decides to like help her out by shooting the tire yeah well i guess like she saw it was a, like a single woman like no nobody else in the car being shot at by a, a car full of other people yeah so it's like an empathetic moment i guess where it's like no i've been that person <laughs> yeah <laughs> possibly or, or the fact that this just shows that she's changed now that she's found out who she actually was 
Yeah, I suppose. Like, I guess that's the thing is, is would she stick her neck out? Or would she have stuck her neck out in the past, and maybe not? Yeah, I think she's apparently out of her slump that she was in. Um, yeah. So she helps Julia out, uh, and then Julia stops and says, "Oh, you need to get in because they'll be up you too." And then they drive away, and like. <laughs> Gets chased by another people and she shoots that one out and then they kind of drive like a Ver- Velma and Louise style to like a cliff face and then they have some random uh, random conversation about how Faye's a bounty hunter and her name's Faye and she goes it's a common oh Faye Faye Valentine yeah yeah it's a common name. Yeah. Or she just yeah, she says Faye Valentine, but she and she says I'm Julia. It's a common name. Yeah. And and uh Faye's like Julia, eh? Yeah. And then uh the drop uh, Julia drops her off back at the ship and says, I'll drop you off back at the ship. We lost the guys now. Um so they go back to the airport and goes, uh tell well, Oh yeah yeah. Tell Spike, uh I'll be at that place. He'll know what I mean. That's right. <laughs> I'll be at the place. He'll know what it means. And anytime somebody says he'll know what it means, all I ever think of is that episode of Friends when Joey is saying, I was like, oh, you're going there? Are you going to see Sal? Tell him I said hi. He'll know what it means. <laughs> and it's just the only thing I can think of is the sarcasm that like precedes that, which is, are you sure he'll be able to crack that code? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it's <laughs> so good. I think that was Char- Chandler. Chandler, yeah, yeah, yeah. Chandler. yeah. Oh, yeah. You you're, you're going to see Sal? Tell him I said hi. <laughs> huh? He'll know what it means. Yeah, yeah. That's that is now permanently ingrained. I can't not hear that <laughs> anytime someone says they'll know what it means. Oh, Jesus. Oh, um. <laughs> I mean, if he climbs into our ship. And Jet busts on the radio, goes, Ah, oh, Faye, you gotta go and come get us. Go and help Jet, his legs busted up. Like Oh it, she he uh, says, Hey Faye, you gotta come and pick us up. And she's like, I'm not gonna be dealing with your messes anymore. I'm not helping out. And he's she's like, Come on, like Jet's legs busted up real bad. We need to get out of here. And then it's like, Oh, oh, okay. Or is that before? Like that, that sort of I don't know. I was that I, I think she does it after from Julia. Was it after? Yeah, I think it was. Did she help him get yeah. away? Ah, I can't remember. I think so. I think it was that was the first thing, and then she gets out the ship. Cause she's like, no, nah, I got a place. I I got a place now. That can be type thing. Oh, okay. Because uh, Spike's, you know, very yeah. That I mean, she's like, oh well, she's still got Jet's still got Ayn and and Ed to look after him. Because she doesn't know that they've That's left. right, I forgot about that. She doesn't know that they've left. Yeah. Oh. Shame. Yeah. Family's all breaking up. Um. And then... I don't know. Vicious kills the council, I think. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this is where he, like, escapes. He's going to be executed. <laughs> That's, the thing. what's going to happen. Yeah. Despite the fact that they were like, you're going to rot. Actually, no. We're going to kill you. I think they, they make uh, him rot for a few days first, because he was chained in like a crucifix <laughs> manner off the wall. Uh, that's right. Yeah. And then people kill uh, him. Yeah, so he escapes. Yeah. Uh, and then I think he kills Shin at some point, but maybe that's next episode. Uh, yes, it is. Yeah. So let's not say that. So they they do the coup successfully, yeah. take over the syndicate. Shen's to- Shen's totally fine. Yeah. At this point. Yeah, Shen's not dead. <laughs> Shen's fine. Le- Shen's, Le- Shen's super fine. Lin's dead, not Shen. Lin's dead. Shen Shen Shen's totally good. Yep. Um. <clears throat> and then, despite start going after them, was that next episode again? So. No, what happens is is Faye contacts him to tell 
him about where Julia is. Oh yeah, yeah. He's like, she's like, I saw Julia. She says go to this place. She said you'd know what it. She said she'll be in the place. She said you'll say. She said you'll know what it means. And he's like, I don't know what that means. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> in in true Spike fashion of just being a total dickhead, <laughs> he's like, oh, I don't know what that means. No, that means nothing to me. Nothing. And then he goes to the place. <laughs> yeah. Then he goes. Of course, Faye storms off at this point, and is like, "It's like, no, had it." <laughs> it's like, yeah, of course you have. He can't, like, I don't. Why can't? Oh God, why can't he just say, "Oh yeah, okay, the place." He has to be like, "Nah." You, you, you're telling me a thing, and because you're telling me a thing, it's fucking wrong. <laughs> <laughs> can't have you thinking that you've done a good thing, Faye. Just you calm down. He's like weirdly gaslighting her to keep her in her place, and I don't know how okay I am with that. Yeah, yeah, he's... He, he does it like quite a lot throughout the series. <laughs> he's just messing with her, man. It's just like a brother sister thing. Yeah, I, I, I am gonna write it up to the sort of a uh, brother sister type thing, but you know, in any other relationship, we'd be like, that is really toxic and bad. <laughs> You're, you're you're creating a really bad atmosphere for that person. Yeah. By never allowing never allowing them to be right or successful. <laughs> yeah. Ah. Oh. Terrible. Um. So so he goes he goes to the place which is a graveyard. Yeah. Well, that's what um because it has has all flashback and that's what he was agreed to for her. <laughs> To meet him after the time he was going to leave. Yeah, that's and right. He said, when he was gonna, when he was gonna abandon it all. Yeah, and he asked Julia to come with him. So this is kind of like explains the whole fucking thing with Spike. Um, because you never really got to understand what happened. You thought maybe Julia died, but it turns out that it's actually he was going to leave the syndicate. And he wanted Julia to come with him. And then Vicious mm-hmm. found out. And Vicious went, Yep. Uh, no, you're not. You're going to have to uh, kill him. I was like, What? Why me? You're going to kill him? No, you are, type thing. And so I think he meets, yeah. meets up. And then I think she sort of shoots Spike, maybe. I don't know if she, she did. You don't really see that scene. No. The, the implication is, is that I think that they come to some sort of arrangement that they're both kind of going to disappear in different ways. Possibly, yeah. It's never, never mentioned. Anyway, um, so and their arrangement was to meet up at this gravestone. Yes. Uh, and then he's like, oh, Julia. And then she just fucking pulls a gun. And then the episode ends. Yeah. Right at that point. <laughs> and then there. Okay. Yeah. It ends literally in the grave. You're like, oh, uh, all right. Uh, it's a weird, weird ending, but sure. It always ends with Spike and held up gunpoint in these two parts. That's true. If he's not being shot or <laughs> killed in some way, yeah. It's not, it's not, it's not really not really an episode. It's not, it's not Spike. No. So, how do you rate this episode? Uh uh, I don't know, it's certainly giving you closure to to some things, I think. Um, it's kind of like showing that they're progressing away from each other now. In the sense. Yeah. And it certainly has a very somber feel to it. Uh, in that sense, and it sounds maybe feels like it's going to be a, a proper conclusion to a story, but I don't know. I, I'm going to give it a seven. Yep, agreed. I think I'm more upset that I think they could have done more to make me feel more about Spike 
more i feel more about the I, I i feel more for the other characters like faye is now lost the only family she's ever really known yeah and and jet has gained a family that he thought he never wanted and realized he did even though they annoyed the shit out of him well, that's what a and does. Ayn, who just kind of wanted to be accepted by a group got a glimpse of all be incredibly brief family life because she found her dad and then was abandoned oh ed and kind of got taught this weird yeah like like got taught this really weird lesson of like well you know um even the people who are your blood relatives will just leave whenever they want so there's no point in hanging about anywhere i just i feel like ed gets dealt a really like a, a bad hand because for her it's like the wrong lessons are learned there's a little bit of a positivity of like you know going out and making your own decisions is totally cool mm -hmm. but there's some sort of there's a bit of sadness in there i think because it's like well you would have been perfectly happy with the rest of them yeah like you were that you are this dysfunctional family unit and that that was kind of good for you for for them like and for spike it's it's spike is a part of that like because he does care about them and they and they care about him yeah you see that but like i say is that his his arc is not it's not not very arced <laughs> it's it's exceptionally linear is that i have a problem i have had the same problem and continue to have that problem i'm now going to find an answer to this problem <laughs> yeah it's yeah I suppose he has the lesser of the thing. He's just kind of like, yeah, I got issues. Yeah, yeah. Oh, look, I'm going to keep with these issues because I can't. I, can, I failed to move by said issues. And I think, like, I, I would be remiss to say, like, I think he's badly written. I don't think that's true. I think all the characters are, are well written in their own way. Like, he's he is a very unique <clears throat> and interesting interestingly written character he's funny and morose and like you know oddly poignant at times like i really like um i think some of the conversations that he has with like with Faye and jet are are uh are really good and there is a scene in the next episode or the one we're about to talk about that i think is probably like one of the best scenes in the entire show uh, maybe since the first episode, which I think had like uh, this this fantastic final scene, um, you know, when uh, in the very first episode where the the woman shoots the the guy she's with, oh yeah, uh, knowing then that you know she stopped what the bad thing that was going to happen if he got away, but knowing that now she had no control of the ship and was going to get shot out of the sky, there's like just this really sort of uh, uh, amazing scene. I think is really really well done and there's other stuff in the show that i think is is of a par maybe not quite as good but like definitely really solid in terms of its uh its poignancy and uh, poignancy and i feel like the in the last episode that the, there is a, a particular scene i think is just really great like absolutely so full of character like bursting with character um from from the people involved in the scene as well it just it's just really great and i i think it's and and as to say it is a really well written show like there's no doubt about that mm -hmm. i think it is just a shame that i find it more difficult to connect with one of the characters because i think they're cool and funny and really good but at the same time they don't have the same depth uh emotionally and 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 they don't learn i don't think as much as the other characters do it feels a bit of a disparity well i would i would argue that's kind of his depth in the character in the sense like i say it's and it, it's all all kind of like about they all have their separate depressional problems um jets obviously feels betrayed but isn't so emotionally net but Spike is essentially just locked himself away in a, in a a case and doesn't see a real way out and is still lost in the past 
It's like you, they all they said for like the last well, the last couple of episodes where they talk about is it I not seen one sees the past and the other one sees the present. Because he's got that. That's kind of... the next episode. Is that the movie? No, that's this one. This is the new. That's a weird scene. That's well, sorry, that's not a weird scene. It's a weird comment because that is literally never brought up. It's brought up once until that moment. It was brought up is in it? the the Jupiter one. I don't remember that. Uh, you know, it's like Julia mentioned it. Oh yeah, your you one well, your eyes is different color. And then uh what's his name? Grown as he puts him in the ship, states, Oh yeah, your eyes are are different colours. And he goes and states that yeah, one looks at the past and one looks at the present. Or maybe that was something Julia mentioned to him. But at the same time, they never he never says that the reason that's the case is because one of them is fake. Yeah, no, 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 uh, they never really go into it, but yeah, it's, yeah, anyway, let's, let's get into this before we, we get to that, so, uh, this is Real Folk Blues Part 2, or Za Riaru Foku Baru Sa, I think is how that is, Koen. Koen. Uh, instead of the, the other one was Zenpen uh-huh. was the first one and this one is Koen so I'm not sure what those are so it's part one <laughs> part two <laughs> uh, well uh, Ish- no because one and two would be Ish and Ni so yeah but maybe not if it's part one and part two I don't know like Japanese is very literal because months are like one month two month three month so I can't imagine it would part one and part two would be any different, but but maybe not. Uh, who who knows? Huh? What? That? That? Cohen is Cohen. <laughs> Interestingly, Zen Pen is part one apparently, <laughs> <laughs> but Cohen is just Cohen. <laughs> I love it. Sure. I love it. Sure. Okay. Water. So it picks up from the graveyard where uh we have uh Spike and Sp- Julia pointing a gun at Spike and the kind of memories of that sort of I was supposed to kill you because I was told to mm-hmm. uh sort of thing. Um and instead uh they make a plan to try and escape yeah they start talking about how to get out of this situation yeah um um and then they escape. and i can't re- just yeah yeah go on and then they run away and i think they get to like uh they get to the shop uh, and what, what was our shop the guy from Oh, this is the 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 uh, syndicate boss's wife who now runs the shop. Yeah, or or always did run a shop. He was unhappy. Yeah, uh, yeah, uh, and is very unhappy to see him. I, <laughs> or was I, yeah at the time. You remember me, Dad? <laughs> yeah, and uh, so they they find her, and she's been shot in the stomach. Uh, or stabbed? Yeah, they go to the shop to see them. I'm not sure they pick up stuff on the way, but they certainly go there and she's certainly been injured because she's part of the old yeah. syndicate. Of course, that's right, yeah. Uh, or the old the Red Dragons side of things. And she's kind of happy about that. And then all shit kind of breaks loose in the shop, and they climb up to the first floor, uh, and then jump through a window, and run along the rooftop, which is, I believe is yeah, that's right. That is a flashback as well. There's a because the thing is, is that what is it like? There, there's a bit where Spike that Spike realizes that someone's coming behind Julia. And shoots, like turns around to shoot. I think I can't remember if that sort of sparks a memory. And then 
as they continue to run across the roof, it turns out there was someone else, and they basically gun Julia down. Yeah. Julia, as they're running across the rooftops. Julia gets shot down. And then that's it of Julia. Julia is now no longer a thing. Yeah. It is, it's a weird, there's a weird thing to this, because he, like, he obviously does react to it. Mm-hmm. But Maybe not in the, to the to the degree I thought he might. <laughs> yeah, it's like Julia. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, well, you know, easy come, easy go. Well, I don't know. Spike seems quite inter. I don't know. I'm... Would that be the word? You know, his, his feelings are always kind of like he's always kind of like placid in things and the way he expresses himself. Yeah. Um, yeah. I would have just thought if anything that might have been the thing that sort of went, oh. Oh, yeah. 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 He, he, and, it, and it does, to to be clear. But I, I guess like I, it's just that initial reaction is a little like okay. It's like She didn't like you know, break her ankle. She's <laughs> she's dead. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I think he is essentially broken inside in the fact that he that goes on a murderous rampage. Um, but his his reaction to things have always been kind of like minimal. And I think that's kind of like how. Yeah. How his character is and his his emotional states. It's yeah. You thought you might have because this is also the thing that's been tying him down in the other emotional state. But when this his she's it. Yeah, she's been kind of everything to this. Yeah, and then she just and it of, just seems a little bit muted. I think he was a broken man a long time ago. The, uh, one thing I will say is these last two episodes feel quite rushed. Um, because I think there's, there's like we were saying, it's like oh, then then Shen comes along and fixes the situation for them, and then this happens, and then this happens, and it just so happens that they're in the same place at the same time to give this information. It's like I appreciate you're trying to fit this into two episodes, but this this feels like the movie. Mm. To me, it's <laughs> like this is this is your movie, you know. Uh, this should be the movie, yeah. Like they could have, they could have done the movie in an, in a in a two part episode. Yeah, they could have uh, done the movie in the sense that that was there. Uh, yeah, they could have done it in the sense that the movie was the last two episodes, and then yeah. and then they did the finale in the movie, which would probably made a better movie. To, to be fair though, like I know that the movie was done retroactively and they had already finished the series and it was sort of done to allow them to write a, another story involving the team, but it, yeah, it these two episodes feel uh, like they were really cut down. Yeah. Um. Yeah, they certainly have. I mean, there's always... It seems to get rushed to a point in this one. So, those guys, Julia's dead. Spike's a little miffed, and rather than being fully on upset, he's like not bursting into tears. But to to your point though, like the 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 reaction is the rest of this episode. Yeah, like the react the reaction to that is is still is burning like a slow burning fire. Uh because he heads back to the bebop mm-hmm. um to to eat with with jet like they have they have food together yeah um oh which was was kind of nice and then they they quote i think in the first episode jet quotes like a wee story and goes i hate that story yes and then yeah, that's right. This time Spike quotes a story. And he goes, I hate that story. Yep. 
it is. It's uh, kind of like the metaphor for both their lives at that that point in time. The story was. Um, I just it's a nice interaction. Like I think, whatever the like, I I, I don't th- like it's the fa- He is sort of a fathering figure, but I don't think it's so- he's sort of the father. I think he's the older older brother type thing. I know he's the father of the situation, but he and Spike are not father and son. They're sort of more brotherly in that way i yeah. think yeah certainly there's um I, in this one anyway he fathers fay <laughs> <laughs> constantly but yeah it, it like there is a sort of a, a a camaraderie i like in this and like it's a it's a it's a nice scene yeah um but of course uh all, all good things can't last and and uh spike decides that well they all have to die. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna, gonna kill them all and make sure this is done now. Yeah, I think uh, I think Jack tries to seize that and in him and tries to talk him out, but realizes yeah. it's a futile uh, argument. To him. So I think that's basically Spike saying his goodbyes. Faze is still about on the ship as well. I think. Yeah, she's she's on the boat, but she's not with them at that point. Yeah. Um, and as Spike is sort of, uh, I, I can't remember if she overhears or if he tells her at that point. But uh, she 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 gets really ang- she she meets him in the corridor in the hallway, and she's really angry with him that she's like, "You are just throwing away your life. This is like you're you're going to die doing this, and you don't seem to care." And that, re- like, for the first time, really bothers Faye. Yeah. Like his his des- his lack of desire to to keep living, like, or his his um just complete point blank blank refusal to feel like death is a problem. Um, and it's it's quite an emotional scene because she's she's genuinely upset, probably for the first time I think in the like the most upset. Yeah. She, she's ever been yeah because i think she before she kind of knew that spike could probably handle himself in the situation that he goes for but now he knows that this is pretty much a suicide mission that he's going into and knows that there's the end of the family type situation that and the you know like before she was detached as well like she maintained a distance and like you know tried not to care too much because she never got too involved she was just there on the fringe and then you know as we kind of see her start to evolve because she starts to remember what you know she starts to learn more about her past and understand and and she can break down the walls of that sort of insecurity and that uh the, the distancing and the desire to sort of keep everyone at arm's length and like that family thing all of a sudden despite being wh- exactly what she wants is exactly what she doesn't want in a weird way because it's kind of making her feel that way yeah um and this is the whole bit where he, he kind of like gets right in phase face and talks about his eyes one looks into the 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 the, the, fu- the future or the present while one looks into the past um yeah and then just kind of it's like, well, gotta go. And uh, she is. This is this is. What I think, like I was saying, the the scene. I think that just sets everything is this where she, on seeing him, like just so blasé to just is like I'm gonna go now. Like there's no goodbye or anything like that. There's no nothing. Like weirdly, I feel like with Jet, there's like this unspoken part of it. Like he kind of knows deep down, like. I don't know that you're going to come back from this. Yeah. And it knows Spike well enough to understand that it, there's no point in talking him out of it because he's not going to listen. Um, And for Faye, she just has this, like, she has her point blank refusal of, well, I'm not going to let you just kill yourself. So she just pulls her gun and kind of tells him to stop. And he doesn't even turn around. 
as she continues to sort of fire shots war- warning shots they're pretty close <laughs> shots around him um without him flinching he just doesn't doesn't move and doesn't engage with it and you see her sort of getting sadder and sadder with every shot that he doesn't stop and every shot that he doesn't react i think that's the best scene in the entire show yeah that's hands down yeah it's certainly a poignant scene like it's a it's also like i say this last episode so it's it's shown bringing out the the closure of the the dynamics and showing that it's it's yeah it's slowly fading away i mean the one episode 24 essentially tried to give Faye and ed a an out from seeing all this happening really but they kept Faye yeah because obviously she's a intrigual part of the the family i think the other part of it is is i feel like the final part of her growth is that scene Mm -hmm. like the final sort of part of her arc is that kind of emotional breakdown of realizing it's like you know she cares about people again for the first time that she well i say again she doesn't really remember caring (laughs) about people in the first place uh other than you know uh haggis or whatever his name was and then she got burned there but Haggis. like yeah yeah this is the she's she's realized that this relationship that she's been in in this ship has been everything to her yeah i think i think it's a it's it's such an important scene i think considering and like one thing I will say about the, both these episodes is the the action sequences are are top notch. Again, like you know, they're they're really great quality. The the shootouts are fantastic, and um, they're difficult to convey in in audio. But you know that the, like there are some really great uh, there's really good animation. There's really good and in, in interesting choreography. Um, it's fast paced. It's 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 action packed. It's just it's just good stuff. But this is the I think this is the emotional peak of the show like these the the, the kind of five minutes of him having his last meal with jet uh with jet mm. and uh you know because i think maybe, maybe there's something in this that i'm missing is maybe the point of spike is is that he doesn't grow maybe the point is is that he grew to a point and he's trying to finish his own arc yeah, maybe like he's he's just been stuck in that sort of final bit of like i just need to end this whereas everyone else has kind of grown around him and uh i think like i say that the kind of the thing the important thing for Faye is because she does get that sort of send off as you say in like episode 24 it's like here's your ticket not to have to deal with any of this <laughs> um but i really do think it was super important for her to come back and experience that yeah she's got to say her goodbyes to the the team as well properly because she's kind of just left but it's yeah in 24 yeah but it's it's not it's not even the fact that she came to say goodbye it's the more the fact is like this is this is really this is the pinnacle of your arc now you're at the you're at the the point where you know everything that has passed is now leading to this point of you you are now a person who cares about other people you are now a person who knows what you want from life and you and that's you know other than to gamble and drink her life away because that was short-term solutions to like you say some sort of depression or struggle that she was having Mm -hmm. with not being able to connect with people due to her memory loss and not wanting to get close to people it's like this is you're now out of that you're so far out of it and it is overwhelming to you. Yeah. Well, I think that's it. She's not, re- she's not ready to lose it all again. Which is no. what that and last like, part I was th- about. That's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. Like, that is really... Uh, I think that's... Actually, you said that really well. It's like, that is, that's exactly... Yeah, she's not ready to experience a loss. Yeah. 
um because she's never had to experience loss really because she's remained consistent like nothing ever really mattered that much yeah keep your distance to just then that's yeah and, and you know obviously she remembers the things that she's lost now and i think that's what's starting to to remind her of that is that she's now allowing herself to become close to things that a loss is now devastating to her yeah um i think her 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 and uh jet i think have fantastic character arcs just i i love the way those characters progress they're just so um so well written mm. in that way you mean um and maybe i have made a like uh a, maybe not a mistake with spike but maybe there is more to the fact that he is less developed than the others yeah i don't know i think that's i think that's his development in the sense that he's like I say, I think they're all kind of some form of depression. Like, people who are depressed will try and force everyone away from people just because it's easier than uh, accepting stuff and then losing it. And that's kind of what Faye's kind of like showing here in this episode by screaming at Spike for leaving. Uh, yep. And then there's people that regress to the point where they, they hide all their emotions so they can um, just be emotionally numb to everything in the world, looking for it yeah. to end, which is what Spike is, really. I, I'm not too sure about Jet. He isn't... He's left his life behind and done... Is is went to bounty hunting because his love he's kind of like let him because he was too controlling, and then that hurt him. Yeah, and then his partner betrayed him, but he didn't know that, and he's kind of just kind of bumbling through life, not really knowing what his main goal is. I think. I feel like his his realization is is he's gonna live his life for him, for a little bit because. He's had he's had all these hang ups, mm-hmm. and uh, it doesn't want to die. <laughs> like that is made clear several times. He's like, yeah, that's suicide, or that's a problem. We're never going to come back from that. Yeah. Uh, there's uh, and and to have that attitude clearly suggests like it's like no, there's 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 a reason you're saying these things because otherwise it just wouldn't matter. And uh, there's a little bit of like, <laughs> a little bit of like, uh, you know, I need to show that I can live the way I want to live without without other people needing to be a part of that all the time. Because I've found people who will just kind of allow me to do that, and I guess they did. Like they they never changed anything for Jet. No, except that. Like they still let Jet be Jet. Yeah. I mean, maybe Jet was their anchor. Oh, like, one hundred percent. Yeah, maybe that's what Jet's whole thing was. Is like, Jet was their anchor from being outrageously just harming themselves and stuff. Anyway, um, so that, that's our so thoughts we, on we, these characters right now. So yeah, let's let's progress the the actual episode. <laughs> Spike. Spike's going hunting. Spike is going. Uh, <laughs> tur- turns up to the the syndicate skyscraper and just starts fucking wasting fools. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He just runs. Yeah, uh, this up is. Uh, r- yep, it's uh, it's super cool. Yeah, he does a lot, a lot of the shooting. It's 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 awesome. It's really good. Mm-hmm. Uh, as with the sort of the the action sequence in the two parter, um. And it introduces, not the two-parter. Is it the two-parter? Uh, I think. Are you talking about the first instance when he fights uh, yeah. Vicious? Uh, vicious. Uh, yeah, uh, Vincent. Uh, vicious. Sorry, yeah. it's uh, Ballad of Fallen Angels, episode five. Yeah, like that. Uh, is yeah, it's great. Yeah, it's like it's that, but magnified with sort of the the weight of um all the all the stuff that's since happened. You know, like um vincent was obviously still a part of a uh, vincent vicious was obviously still part of a 
a syndicate but is now sort of gradually taking over slowly but surely and is now sort of the figurehead Mm -hmm. um and obviously spike has just lost julia yeah which was his kind of reason to be for the longest time yeah um so so yeah there's this this whole shootout is pretty cool yeah um he gets pretty badly injured though he's like and he takes a few bullets. He does take a few bu- bullets. Uh, again, always f- and vicious isn't even in the fight yet. He just keeps seeing vicious in the far <laughs> uh, in the far away. He's like ha ha ha, and then yeah, like, he's just um, nope. Mister Xing his shit up on the top floor of the building. Yeah, man. Yeah. Uh, Shin comes in and helps him. So I'll I'll take out these fools. Does. But I think he tries. I think he gets taken out at that point. He does, yeah. Like, I another sort of. Uh, there's something in that, like you know, as he said before, is like you're always stuck in the middle of it, and here he is again, stuck in the middle of it, just like his brother, who also died, in the middle of something that wasn't even his fight, really. Mm-hmm. Um, it's that there's kind of a sadness to that. It's like a a bit of an irony, both brothers dying in the sort of similar circumstances, um. It's I'm a, it's a bit of a shame because like I feel like his character could maybe have been more than it was. It's only in a couple of scenes really. Yeah, um, well, it's the same as the uh, Lynn. Lynn kind of like yeah. I feel like the thing with with, with Lynn though, like, is that that it was because it was from uh, Vicious's perspective. He was a henchman of Vicious's, Vicious's. Uh, whereas in this, you know, the interaction has mostly been with Spike. Spike. Yeah, and it's like I just kind of felt like they they could have done more, but it, it's not bad. It just it 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 feels uh feels a shame to kill off that character, having not let them live more within the world from from our, to, for, to us. So yeah, I mean, which is this day to learn that he was looking at the things wrong. He shouldn't be doing things the way he is doing, but he still lived towards the syndicate. Yeah. Um yeah, that's true. Philosophy. Uh, um so <laughs> and then so this is where we at. this is the, the sort of final showdown, as it were. Yeah. We have uh Vicious with his uh you know, standard samurai sword. Spike with his gun. Yep. Fighting it off. Because, you know how else would you fight a guy with a sword? Or a gun. I can't like it's so spike there's a like a back and forth of the you know the the sword and the gun and mm. it comes to the point where sort of they both their weapons hit the deck or something like that yeah they both knock each other weapons out because i think the spike gets stabbed in the shoulder shoulder and, yes uh, he also shoots Vicious in the shoulder. Yes. And they, they both drop the weapons at that point. And uh, they get kind of up close and personal. Mm-hmm. And Spike's like, yeah, this is... I'm going to end this now. <laughs> and sort of like flicks the gun back into his hand. And Vicious is also pretty quick off the mark and has the sword ready to swing. Mm-hmm. Um, It's a little bit like a sort of a... a a little bit cowboy cowboyish again where you know like the meet at high noon yeah uh Dawn. and and it just happens that you know uh spike was quicker off the draw and gets a shot off to center mass yeah he, he finally gets put down vicious but the fight doesn't last particularly long, but I think the, the the choreography of it within that time frame is pretty good. Like it feels pretty energetic and and uh, impactful. So this is pretty good. Yeah, yeah, it's, it certainly is. Um, and then yeah, so Spike walks out, the, starts walking out of the building. Yep. Uh, in in quite a state. Yeah, it's very much a fucked up state. In fact, yeah, so so bad it's... that he 
because it gets down to the bottom of the skyscraper for the, the big like main throne room area and then just collapses <laughs> well he he points at them with uh his hand like a gun oh yeah and says bang and then just falls yeah and uh and that's the end of the show that's it yeah so he's dead he's certainly uh unconscious i mean it is I... poignant uh he is, should be dead it is it is pretty much summed up that he's dead it's the end and it's the end yeah it's it's the, it's the end of it right like is it feels um I, th- I do like that i didn't like that they killed him because i thought it was a shame that after all that that's how it ended but at the same time that's not because i don't think that's the right way to do it just because i think it's a shame mm-hmm. to lose a character like that in that way but it's so interesting to think about the idea that the show opens with him to a degree and the journey is literally the string of episodes Mm. it's it's not you know like it's not um like in other shows where we get a bit of aftermath and we get to find out you know what other people went to do and you know there's no uh, there's no there's no after yeah it's literally like the first the first breath of it for us and then his last breath is like and that's it Mm -hmm. yeah i I, like I, i i like that like i like that when it's like and 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 now we're going to show credits because it's like the he him being alive was this show like mm-hmm. you cannot have this show if he's dead that's that is how this is like this show to a weird degree is like his consciousness yeah that was him having his one last bit of fun for the inevitable it's it's just uh, like I I think the the skyscraper scene's really good like and I I think that I think the the fight with vicious is also really good, um, I was like I say, I don't think it's a it's not a bad way for it to end because I think that makes perfect sense and like it plays it out really well. I just think it, it, it is a shame to lose a character like that. Yeah, I mean, cer- certainly you could argue that he is still alive because all you saw him is just fall down. Uh, or, or totally. I mean, because like he's he's done that a few times in the show already. <laughs> he has. I feel like um. I I don't know. Like I it would. I'm not even sure what the significance of him saying "bang" was. Oh, like did that? Did he not do that like in the first episode? I'm sure he goes. Does that to? I but think it's, maybe, it's, it's to his character. Yeah, he, he he has done that single before. But it is it's to his character. It plays to the way his character is. Yeah, I mean, you know, like uh, it is that sort of playful cheekiness that we have come to know in Spike for throughout this entire series. Mm-hmm. Um, but I do think it's interesting that like I. I the thing that says to me he's dead is the fact they stop immediately after he's after that scene. Oh yeah, yeah, he totally is. Because I, I and I, it, it, you could argue he is alive, but I, I I feel like that's the intention of this entirely, is that it's like now that he's dead, there is nothing left to show you. Yeah, everything's been ended. He said. Yeah, like even if it hadn't been, I think that's the thing. <laughs> it's just like he's done now, so we're done here. Yeah. Yeah, it's he's it, totally is dead. Um, and it would, could potentially have made a second season of it, but that would just wouldn't that would just be subpar and wrong morally. I feel I, I, I am, in a way, saddened that there won't be any more. Mm. Because. I do feel like this show had something. Mm-hmm. Like it is the there is a reason this is a revered show 
there's a reason people use this is like they hold this up there's a band called cu space cowboy <laughs> the iconography is everywhere it is synonymous with anime fan there's a reason everyone was so fucking pissed off at the netflix show there's a reason there was a netflix show mm-hmm. like um it just to me it is one of those difficult things to accept as a person who likes what they're watching that this is done now there will never be any more of it we're not like going the harry potter route or anything like that where it's like oh we'll just do some prequels and then you know maybe do this so we can continue to talk about these characters or this world it's like no no we told the story we came to tell and the story is done yep i'm sorry that you're upset by that (laughs) Well, but that not, is what it is, sorry, and like, I think that's the whole point in the last episode. Yeah, the la- last two episodes it, were basically a swan totally right. song. To it, it's like, and I think it, anime does this better than most things. I think, like, because there's a lot of like, and, and I suppose that is the interesting thing is, is that when I watch a movie or I watch two movies or I watch a series of movies, like, often I'm I would be really excited to see more of it. Um, and but more often than not, I end up getting that anyway. Yeah. But even that, that's maybe like what three movies is at most six hours, right? Give or take. Some of that, yeah. But two but hours average. This, this, this show is is twenty six episodes at twenty minutes each. Yeah. You know, it's like we're we're talking about into about eight or nine hours, and then you get the movie on top of that. Yeah. So I've I've spent a significant amount of time with these characters and with tv shows you spend so much time with them that inevitably they do continue and continue and continue in perpetuity and in a lot of instances way longer than they should do yeah yeah um find that things are just oh that was successful we'll just keep making that for then but but i feel like that's where anime in a lot of examples has done really well like i know that there are a lot of reimaginings and things like that and more often that like Mm -hmm. i don't know exactly what the circumstances of uh full metal alchemist and full alchemist full metal alchemist brotherhood are like i'm not entirely sure what the difference is there not much well but the, 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 there's like helsing and ultimate helsing and the rationale for that was as they started writing and uh, putting together the anime before the manga is finished yeah maybe that's the same with full metal alchemist it certainly it, it could well be it, it, it changed the way how things ended that's for sure but it kept the core story arcs to a degree yeah. but I, I there's like 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 Gurren Lagann or um or, or Lane or Haruhi like those have like granted Haruhi does outlive its welcome a little bit at a certain point but it pulls it back in the movie yeah yeah, and by the, by the time they do by the time they do that movie, that movie is absolutely transformative to the experience of that entire thing. Mm-hmm. It is so important that if people watch that show, that they watch that movie. Like it's critical. Yeah. Like it. Like my experience of that show was that show was pretty good, and I enjoyed that. Mm-hmm. And then having watched the movie, it completely reworked my entire thoughts on everything. Yeah. Um, um and, and but it's stuff like that that it's it, it it's done with purpose, it's done with intent, and it's done to because there's room to talk about it. Yeah. And and with Cowboy Bebop, they did exactly that. It's like this is the room and space we have. We have to talk about this, and we're going to do that. Yeah, I don't know. If that's still the same for modern anime. I mean, I know you have anime is long running, such as Naruto. It just continues and continues yeah. and continues, and then also One Piece. I struggle with those, if I'm honest. Yeah, One Piece, Naruto, or Boruto, or whoever it is now. Uh, Bleach. Um, Bleach. Like Bleach is those are the ones I struggle with the most. Yeah, because they just kept going and going and going and going and going, and people are like, "Oh, well, this bit's not really that entertaining, and this bit's not." Yeah, I don't really like that bit, and you're like, "Well, why watch it? Why is it here?" <laughs> 
and like granted i will like even to one of my favorite shows dragon ball z there's a load of shit in that yeah it's that is just awful yeah awful and it's still going with dragon ball keep coming back to it and i, I they, they do I, it does get better though because gt was trash and uh super's been pretty good super's kind of back to the the z kind of style the z yeah which is a bit worrying but i think gt didn't really have um i don't think they had like the uh the creator on board with gt they were just making it up i think oh really yeah i don't think he had like oh, man. full directional or he had maybe full directional and I'm sure there's something about GT and an original creator says, oh yeah, you can use my images. It's rough. Uh, type thing and work on it there. Um, Akira, to- Akira Toriyama, I uh, do love their, their artwork. Yeah, because so. he went and did like Blue Dragon and stuff, didn't he? He did with uh, Mist Walker yeah. for, the, for the Xbox. And is he working with Dragon Age? The Dragon Age, not Dragon Age. Dragon Quest. Dragon Quest. He do, he, he does a lot of the work. He does the character stuff for Dragon Quest as well. I think. Because so. certainly it's within his kind of uh, anime character style. Oh, it's, it's super his wheelhouse. Yeah. Um, I think the thing that what I will say about Dragon Ball Z is though is I genuinely do believe they fixed that with Kai. They made Dragon Ball Z the series that it should have been. With those edits. Yeah, I mean that's. I don't know. I don't know if it's because they're sh- shooting jump mangas. Uh, and <sighs> yeah, I don't know if that pushes it to be tiresome because they keep want stuff to put into their their book. Well, there's the, the it's the filler territory, right? Yeah. Where the pro- that that's the the reason that you know anime ends up with filler to my knowledge is mostly because it's like well the we've caught we're, we're where the manga is <laughs> and uh we don't know what to do so we're gonna do this until we can get to the next arc yeah um i think and 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 that's to, to their credit with with helsing which did not follow the, the manga um still pretty fucking good like they i thought they did a good job ultimate helsing is better but yeah, the original is is still great. I'm not sure how many enemies still does the filler thing. I think they've finally got rid of it. So, for example, Attack on Titans could have filler, but they don't. I watched two episodes of Attack on Titan, mm-hmm. and I liked it. I did not like looking at it. Did not like looking at it. It. I struggled with it because of the motion of the animation and it, it I don't know why because I'm usually not fussed about that sort of stuff I'll usually just do whatever uh-huh. um, and I ended up reading it instead which is weird because <laughs> uh, I was like I loved the idea of the story so I was like I want more of this and ended up reading a bunch of the books so um, sure. another series while we're on it mm-hmm. that has a great arc, a perfect here are the episodes and this is how it is is Death Note Death Note yeah that has an arc I didn't really like it it's great oh seriously? no man, that's, it's not really oh, my thing it's like, to, oh, I can write we have to do Death Note no, rather not <laughs> so I can talk to you about how amazing it is yes I noticed well, you know what? I, I get to work school days, uh, so maybe. Oh yes, I, th- that is a point. I, well, so here's um, to follow up on a point I think I made previously. I think Cowboy Bebop the episodes, mm-hmm. rating them individually for me, I I, I love the show. Like mm-hmm. I think it's uh, it is beautifully animated. The characters are wonderfully written and interesting. Um, the stories more often than not are are you know gripping and 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 fun um like it is a really difficult thing to balance 
comedy and 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 gravity and, and levity all all in a show and i think they they straddle that line really really well they did it um, pretty good so talk about rating oh shit they haven't rated the last episode rate the last episode what have you got what have i got um i think it's very well done for the last episode it's very poignant. It makes itself clear that it will be the last episode. It has the action. It has like the the sorrow goodbye actions. The I I'm, I'm going to give it. I'm going to go with a nine. I think I liked it. It it certainly hits home in saying it's the last yeah. last um, thing. Can't you remember what it says at the end? Actually, what was it? It has something. Oh, it's oh, actually, that is a really good point. I think it says, "You'll carry the weight." You'll carry the weight. I think is what it says. Um, Does it? I want to say, "You, it's, you're going to carry that weight." Is the phrase. Um, I was going to give this last episode a six. Yeah, I was. No, changing your mind though, because um, I give it a nine. I'm. Well, n- no, I think talking it over and and like in particular, like I say that that scene with Faye and Spike, I think is just such a fantastic scene, and I think if I was to give the episode a six, I'd be quite remiss. So I think I'll match the the previous and say a seven mm-hmm. i think generally i i like that it wraps up and everything but it, it, at the same time it, it's it's a a little anticlimactic i feel like they could have started ending it a bit further back to allow this a bit more room to breathe um but yeah i i think so i suppose it w- couple of things that you're going to carry that weight what's your take on that uh i suppose it's talking about the weighted heart of um spike leaving or he's just full of lead and he's got to carry that weight <laughs> yeah he's just so fucking heavy now yeah man. he's got like <laughs> extra two kilos on him <laughs> with all the lead in them. Um, it's I suppose it's just kind of in the sense of I don't know it's emotional weight I suppose see I, I saw it as sort of a cautionary thing um, because a lot of the show is about decisions Mm-hmm. and i just I, I felt that that was the the message it's you know you'll carry the weight of your decisions yeah like every every de- every decision you make you'll carry that weight and i think like you know we've seen all the characters make various decisions throughout the the entire show yeah and i think that's the i i, I that's what i took from it anyway that might not be might be way off base but that's sort of what i felt like um I I think that um Yeah. The individual episodes I think are great. As a series, do I think it's a great series? I think the episodes in it are good. I don't know that as a series it is great for me. No. Do you, like I, I also, to be clear, it is not bad, and it's not just good. It is very good. I just don't think that the the individual episodes themselves. That I think I what was I said the last time is like the, the sum of the parts are more than the whole in this example. Normally, you know, it's it, things are greater than the sum of their parts, but I just like feel like the, the, the macro. Or the sort of the meta of everything of this this series is just not quite as good as when you get into it. 
Um, what would you say is your favorite episode? Favorite episode? Well, my favorite episode would certainly be, I think, Andy. Cowboy Funk. Cowboy Funk, just because it was good fun. It was literally out of... hands down, hands down the best episode. Yeah, it's just it was kind of like just nothing else that they'd done. It was right, essentially yep. good fun, stupid. And zany, it wasn't. It got away from all the seriousness. Yep. And it let the characters be fun. Yeah. It let the characters have a little fun with their. It let them play to their stereotypes, and it allowed us to see sort of spikes in securities that we hadn't really seen before, which was kind of fun. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think the, it's it is absolutely my favorite. Um, and I, I, I often watch anime, and I, I, I. <laughs> say i what i grade anime and television differently yeah you know it's like oh well, that was good for for anime yeah i enjoyed that um and it, it, it's not because i think one is better than the other it's just that i'm in my mind i have this separation but i think <laughs> for this episode for cowboy funk i i would i would go on record to say is like it's not just my favorite episode of anime or one of my ep- favorite episodes of anime. It might be one of my favorite episodes of video. Like it's just so good. <laughs> it's a good episode. It's cer- certainly a good episode for Cowboy Bebop. Not sure it's the. It's done in a good way. It's. It's there. I don't know if I put it up there in. Video top tens or anything like that i can't think what i if i was to sort of put together like episodes of tel- television mm-hmm. uh it would definitely be up there for me like it's just exceptionally clever mm-hmm. like the the whole teddy bomber being ignored thing is absolutely hilarious uh-huh. it shouldn't be they're ignoring a terrorist mm-hmm. and not just ignoring him in some cases berating him because he's talking over their argument that is not about the fact that he's blowing shit up. <laughs> yeah. And also uh, he berating them because they're, they're ignoring him. Well, I never. Yeah. It's, uh, How dare it's they? It's just so good. And then he it's so good. goes out and calls them out both because he's he's pissed off that he's being ignored. Oh, I love it. I love it. It's such a great episode. Um... And it was such a joy to talk about. Mm-hmm. Um, I can't believe it's finally here. We've we've finally done it. Um, well, finish Cowboy Bebop. We've been, yeah, we've been talking about this for quite some time. Um, well, yeah, it was uh, since fourteen episodes. October last year. Fourteen episodes. Yeah. Will it be fourteen? Is it only fourteen? Yeah. Holy shit! Well, fourteen yeah, episodes. Wow. You just divide twenty six by two plus the movie. Yeah, yeah, you're right. I can, Fourteen episodes, I can damn. Do maths. You can math. I can math. Um, not math, math. <laughs> don't don't do math. Um, <laughs> don't do math. <laughs> math, not even once. <laughs> um, I it, like I am. I know this is like obviously we're gonna do we're gonna do we're gonna take a, a week and do a palate cleanser. I think we're gonna do your name your name yeah yeah we're gonna do do your name and then we're gonna come back from your name with a shorter series this time we're gonna do school days which you mentioned earlier yeah. school days uh which is quite exciting uh you've told me i may have a falling out with you because you've asked me to watch it so that should be interesting uh, maybe i don't know <laughs> <laughs> well we'll see We'll see. Um, Pretty sure it's only but yeah, 12 this minutes. twelve episodes. Yeah, yeah. So it's this has been a. I've really enjoyed talking about Cowboy Bebop, um, and I I think weirdly <laughs> every time we go into talk about the last episode or something, <laughs> I think I don't have anything to say. 
Yeah. And then I, I fucking talk for ages. You got, you got lots to say, man. And I don't I, like, but none of this is like pre-planned. I just sort of um, vamp weirdly <laughs> at the end of it. Like, all of a sudden, um, when faced with the inevitable end of a thing I've enjoyed watching, uh, all of a sudden my thoughts on it solidify to a degree and I, I start throwing out things. Like the end of Serial Experiment Lane, it's like, maybe it's this. Oh God, what if it's this? And then you're like, but have you thought about this? It's like, oh my God, no, I haven't thought about that. But what, if that's true, then what happens to this? And it just becomes, oh God. <laughs> becomes horrifying yeah in fact yeah our, our, our last episode of lane was nearly two hours long so oh well, that's cool. in fact we are nearly at two hours on this yeah we're, we're uh near there um so yeah the next episodes we're doing is um uh your name the the movie thing yep. it's also be aired pretty much near valentine's day yeah i think we'll put that episode live on the 13th so the night before yeah i think that should go there because uh which is also for you super bowl fans the night of the super bowl so oh wow that's great timing for a super bowl night of valentine's day sure is because that's what every every couple wants is a hungover man of course the next day yep I do not have enough days to take off work to stay up and watch it this year. So, <laughs> oh, what? <laughs> I don't, I'm not even. Yeah. No, I'm not doing that. I'm. I got things to do. So yeah. So the thirtieth should be twenty three, twenty four. Well, you'll have listened. You'll have listened to that. Oh, twenty. Yeah, and then. Oh, this, yeah. You're speaking about the past. We're speaking about the past. And then six would be this when we are this one. Yeah. This one. Th yeah. You're listening to this because it's now the sixth or beyond. Yeah. <laughs> it's now the sixth. We didn't record this really er uh, before then. Um, and you should also know that there'll be a new season up on our YouTube channel. Oh, yeah. Uh, this Sunday. This Sunday. No, no, or the thirtieth. This Sunday. The thirtieth, past Sunday. And it, what what episodes will that be? It's a uh, melancholy, hurry, Susan Mia, uh, season one. So it's season one, sweet. Yep, that'll be awesome. Um, this seems like a good a good place to sort of do our do our wrap up then. That seems very good. Um. Uh, well, thank you for listening to Who's That Anime. We are, as you know, an anime podcast, the best kind of anime podcast, where we sometimes talk about anime. Um, well. You can find us at anchor.fm forward slash who's that anime, um, and we can be found where all good podcasts can be found, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Pocket Cast, Overcast, and Spotify, and anywhere an RSS feed will work. Mm -hmm. um, we don't make any money from this show, so no adverts, <clears throat> no... No anything, no Patreons, no nothing like that. Not precluding the future of that, might I add. But, you know, right now, um, if you are really enjoying what we do, um, a great way to be a part of that is to tell other people that you like this show and maybe get them to listen. Um, if you want to write us a review, five-star reviews are always welcome. Um, however, if you do want to write a review with lower star rating, that's absolutely welcome too constructive feedback would be lovely though mm -hmm. i would like to point out colin that we do have two reviews two reviews two whole reviews um and i you know this is not going to be a regular segment that should tell you the volume that these reviews are coming in at um but we do have two whole reviews and i will make an initial apology to socar4 who has left us a lovely five star review on september 4th last year that I have just found. Um that's and quoted as saying Yeah, that's 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 the sad part. Uh the best anime podcast. I feel like we've we have we have earned that title at this point. So oh, this is why we that's how you managed to use it. 
Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's now basically the the back of the box quote for this show. <laughs> so, the best anime podcast. Thanks, Soulcar Four. <laughs> yep, thank you for that. Uh, and we have a a newer review from this year, from a few days ago, from Proper Gander, which is a pretty good username, uh, that reads, Two adult Scottish men discussing anime. What more could you ask for in life? Well, yeah, you could probably try for more, but while you're working towards bettering yourself, you should listen to Who's That Anime. It's fun and funny. I look forward to every episode. That's very kind. That's, that's the best and review. Definitely... Uh, pointing that out before this show started put a bit of pep in my step uh so thank you so kindly for the review um i hope you enjoy this episode when you get to hear it um so moving on oh. from our reviews we move on to oh do, go on do you want to go on state that when you say proper ganda it sounds like it's pro- gander uh it sounds like propaganda as in like the yeah it's it's the thing but it's actually Gander, which is like having a good look at something, so it's like proper looking at stuff. Oh, I thought it was like a, a, a like a a real goose. A real goose. <laughs> yeah. I suppose there's many interpretations. Oh, I mean that's, uh. that's, that's it. Uh, it's, that's why it's a good handle on the podcast. Yeah. Proper Gander. So yeah, thank you again for your review. Yeah. Uh, as you've already mentioned, Colin, we do have uh, the YouTube channel. Mm-hmm. And there will be a new series up, uh, which is season one of Haruhi Suzumiya. That'll be live on Sunday. It'll already be live by the time you're listening to this. Yep. Sunday the 30th. Um, yep. And we also have a Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash who's that anime. And going to there will allow you to find out when new episodes are live or join us in just anime memes, as we so often put forward. Mm-hmm. Colin also likes to play video games sometimes mm-hmm. at twitch.tv forward slash couchfuel. Mm-hmm. Um, right now, you are in the middle of a move, mm-hmm. and that is not a thing that's happening right now. Yes. However, there is an archive of all of the games and things you've played. At youtube.com if you search for the channel couch fuel yep um i'd like to point out that i haven't streamed anything since october when we started cowboy bebop yep this has taken over my life yep yep <laughs> hopefully hopefully the next one will allow some extra time yeah. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> and similarly uh i sometimes like to stream things uh on twitch.tv forward slash hail payment um I haven't streamed anything for a while either, but there is an archive of what I do like to stream on my YouTube channel, which if you go to youtube.com and look for Hail Payment, you will find. And here we are, Colin. Yeah. It's the end of another episode. The last episode of Cowboy Bebop. That's us. We're finished with speaking about it. Um, so I do have one question before we leave and end this before we make it two hours long. Are you, okay. are you now intrigued to watch the Netflix live action show? Yeah, I am actually, and I will do that, and I will report back on my my thoughts, my my findings. Um, to be fair, uh, I watched the trailers for that and thought they had done a relatively good job of making it at least have the same feel of of the the anime. Mm. I think the problem with that is is that they've leaned into that as a thing rather than leaning into just mirroring some of the characters and things like that uh i think i think you'll be surprised it certainly doesn't follow the same path as anime did it might answer some of your complaints with the the arc not going anywhere Uh, yeah maybe i think like um I hear a lot of mixed things. I hear some people saying they've really enjoyed it and they think the casting is really good and I've heard people saying the complete opposite. That they just didn't like it and they felt that the casting was just wrong. Um, I'm going into it with an open mind. I think well, the, uh, it, I think it looks okay. It's the best way to do it, man. Um, I, I enjoyed it. I just didn't think it pulled off the anime. Which it wasn't... It's, that's okay. It wasn't actually trying to do. 
Well, I suppose that, like I say, that's maybe the problem is is that I think they made a bit, a bit of an attempt and that didn't really pay off as well throughout the whole show, but did better in smaller clips. I think, yeah, I think it essentially was meant to have the aesthetics of the anime, essentially. Yep. But not be its own thing. Well, telling the story. And yeah, I feel like it's they probably would have benefited from just doing more of their own thing. Yeah, I um I watched the first few episodes and I was like, no, oh, this is not how that I how it where it goes into. I mean, what's this all about? What what's this underlying art with wishes and stuff like that? What? And then uh, we moved on and like, oh right, it's the whole thing of the that. But anyway, with that. <laughs> Uh, comment. And we did it. We did it. Uh, this has been Who's That Anime. Uh, you have your lovely host Steve and Colin, who might be lovely. I don't know. You are. Hey! Leave, leave, leave a five star review. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just because of that. Yeah, just because of that. Uh, anyway, um, uh, that's us signing off. Space Cowboys. Till next time. Ciao. See you, Space Cowboy.